This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism coming to you live and direct from my hometown by way of Africa, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, at the Unapologetically African Library. I don't intend to keep you all long this evening. You have things to do, and I need to pack and get ready to make my way to the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, to kick off my last and final annual Kwanzaa tour. I will be speaking in Chicago on Tuesday, the first day of Kwanzaa, 6 p.m. at the Harold Washington Cultural Center. It will be my first time in the Harold Washington Cultural Center. Thanks to Sister Jimalita and all the brothers and sisters with the HWCC. Shout out to Brother Justice from the Coach Connection for helping to spread the word. Shout out to Sister Keisha for helping me get the opening acts together. Shout out to the security team for looking out for Dr. Umar Johnson. My front, my back, my side, and my side whenever I'm in town. Dennis, Phil, Zaki, Rob, and the list goes on and on. Shout out to Yasa Senegalese, where I eat at every time I'm in Chicago. And it's my number one restaurant in the world. So the doors will open up in Chicago Tuesday, 4 o'clock. Don't forget, all children 17 and younger are free. If you plan on bringing a large group, you may have a group of adjudicated youth, a group of foster youth, a group of adoptive children, so-called juveniles, whatever the case may be. Please send me an email and let me know ahead of time what size group of youth you're bringing so we can properly accommodate you. But all children are free, 17 and under. All elders are free, 65 and older. Following Chicago, I'll make my way down to ATL, the new black Mecca. I'll be in Atlanta, Georgia on Thursday, December the 28th, Shrine of the Black Madonna, 6 p.m. doors at 4. Very much looking forward to it. It's been a long time, Atlanta. It's been a long time, Chicago. I was last in Chicago speaking in February. And of course, we had a community conversation at the Culture Connection not long ago. After Atlanta, I will make my way down to Houston, Texas, where I haven't been since September 11th of 2016. So in Houston, Texas, again, we will be at the Shrine of the Black Madonna. And that is also, that's going to be a 5 p.m. lecture. Houston is the only city where we will start an hour earlier because it is a Saturday and not a weekday. But prior to the lecture in Houston, there will be a free community called the Ma'at Academy for Brothers and Sisters in Texas from 12 p.m. until 5. You can come and get free information from a variety of brothers and sisters in the community who specialize in a variety of different areas. There will be free information at the Shrine of the Black Madonna in Houston from 12 to 5, absolutely free on agriculture, spirituality, economics, self-care, love, political organizing, and the list goes on and on and on. Of course, we know our brothers and sisters in Houston were hit pretty hard with the hurricane that came through there this past summer. While Dr. Umar Johnson was away in Cuba being initiated. So there was going to be information. There will also be a Kwanzaa market, a Kwanzaa market in Houston, Texas, Shrine of the Black Madonna. If anyone is interested in vending, if anyone is interested in vending in Houston on Saturday, December 30th at my Kwanzaa event, there are still spots available in Houston. Most of my vendors will let you know that they do very good when they come to my events because I make the people or I ask the people to support the vendors. So, Houston, it's going to be a full day starting at 12 and going all the way through to the evening. And then we will make our way to Detroit, Michigan, Motown, the blackest city in America, New Year's Day, Northwest Activity Center, doors at 4, lecture at 6. With that being said, let me call out some ancestral spirits. I want to call on my ancestors, Father Bailey and Mother Selah. I want to call on Mother Jenny and Grandma Betsy, all of whom were born and served their entire life in slavery. I want to call on Grandpa Isaac, who was a free black man. 
but had to watch my grandma Betsy and all 12 of their children suffer in slavery. I want to call on my five times great grandmother, young Betsy Bailey, who was snatched from my four times great grandfather, Stephen Henry Bailey, the half brother and first cousin of Frederick Douglass. I want to call on grandma, young Betsy at this time, who was so deep into Mississippi. I want to call on Grandpa Stephen Henry Bailey and Grandmom Caroline Wilson Bailey. I want to call on my great-great-great-grandfather, George Washington Bailey, the first black public school teacher in Tobacco County, Maryland. I want to call on Grandmom Annie Wayman, the niece of Bishop Alexander Wayman, the seventh bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And I want to call on Mama Wayman and Papa Wayman and Charles Henry Wayman and Francis Wayman and Bishop Alexander Wayman. I want to call on Grandmom Caroline and Grandma Vivian and Grandpa Cicero, and Grandpa James Johnson. I'm going to call on Uncle Clifford and Cousin Shanika, who we lost two years ago. I'm going to call on Grandma Gertrude and Grandpa Charlie and Great Grandma Curly, and I'm going to call on Great Grandpa Robert Shoemaker and Great 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 Grandpa Robert Shoemaker Sr. and Grandma Emma and Great Great Grandma Delia, Great Great Grandpa Isaac and Great Grandma Eileen and Great Grandpa William and Uncle Billy, and let me call on Cousin Nancy and let me call on Uncle Eric and Uncle Dennis. Shoemake. And let me call on the original black man, Reverend Dave Devlin, the OBM from right here in Philadelphia. My big brother from another mother, Clifford Howard from right here in Philadelphia. And of course, the late and always great Dr. Leofi Shakespeare King, Baba Taharka, without whose assistance I would have never earned my doctorate. Brothers and sisters, I'm here tonight. Because many of you have seen, you have heard, you have read the information that has been shared across social network about the fact that the state of Pennsylvania has brought me up on charges by way of the State Board of Psychology. I have been ordered to stand trial in the state capital of Pennsylvania in Harrisburg on the first Monday of the new year, other than January 1st, and that is January the 8th. I am going. I want to apologize to my brothers and sisters in Tokyo. You had already arranged the events and the venues in Tokyo well ahead of time. You did your job. But because of white supremacy, that got cut short. It was interrupted because I now have to go and stay in trial for bogus charges created because members of my own race sought to destroy me by constantly complaining about me to the white authorities. And so to my family in Tokyo, I'm asking that you make your way to Osaka, Japan, and to Nagoya, Japan. I am still coming. I just will not be coming on the day originally planned, but I still will be in Osaka and I still will be in Nagoya. And yes, I will still be in Shanghai, China. So again, my apologies, Tokyo. And I look to see you soon. Shout out to my entire Black Asia family that's been holding tight with me. For the brothers and sisters in Toronto, Canada, that event will still take place. It is scheduled. I am contracted and to the best of my ability. And to the best of my knowledge, that event will take place in Toronto, Canada in February. All of the events that I have agreed to on the college campuses, I will continue to uphold my agreements. I've already contracted with several HBCUs to do some speaking during Black History Month on those campuses, and I intend to keep that word. Brothers and sisters, I am disappointed. I am ashamed and to some extent humiliated by the fact that for the past three years, Many of you have sought to destroy my credibility. Many of you have taken every opportunity presented to you to try to destroy the image and the work of Dr. Umar Johnson. Although I am the only, I repeat, I am the only, I will say again, I am the only personality in the black consciousness circuit with my expertise in child mental health, special education, and school psychology. Despite that I'm the only one who can give black parents that type of expertise from within the conscious community, you didn't care enough about our children. You didn't care enough about our children to say hands off of Dr. Umar because he's doing the work that no other speaker in the conscious community can do. Let me say that again. He's doing the work that no other speaker in the conscious community can do. He's filling a void that no other speaker in the conscious community can fill. That doesn't make me more important. 
because those brothers and sisters also have expertises and interests and competencies that the community can benefit as well. I'm simply stating that when it comes to the school to prison pipeline, I am the foremost expert in that area, not just in black consciousness, but within black America. So it does hurt me. It does hurt me for someone who have worked as large as I as long as I have and have given their life as fully and as indefinitely and as selflessly as I have to be attacked by members of the very same community that I sought to help. Yes, the campaign began right here in my own city, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with a brother who I used to work with at a African Senate charter school. He was the first to write articles about me not having a doctorate. Obviously a lie. Okay. He was the first to write letters about me stating I was misusing the funds. Obviously a lie. And then another brother who's not from Philadelphia, but was living here at the time, joined in on the charade and joined in on the campaign. And then a sister from Texas joined in and then other people joined in simply because they had nothing better to do and clearly could not have been working on behalf of African people because there's no way you can have time to tear down the foremost scholar in this country if you genuinely have something of significance to do for black people. As you all know, go fund me. I got a message from GoFundMe that they intend to take down or remove the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy campaign from their platform if I do not provide them with a statement of funds and with a contact number for the realtor of FDMG. To this second, I have not moved to provide them with the information that they have requested. And the reason I have not moved to provide them with the information that they have requested is because I have already, I have already previously provided them with the bank statement and the bank details and have given them full legal permission to contact the bank without my presence to find out whether or not a single penny to find out whether or not a single penny of the funds donated to me in the cause of building America's first independent black boy academy based strictly off the principles of revolutionary pan-African nationalism and international economics. I gave them permission to contact the bank to find out if Dr. Umar misappropriated a single penny of any of the funds that you all have so graciously given me from your earnings over the past years. But rather than do that, they continue to harass me. Every time one of you, not white people, but black people, every time one of you complains to me, complains about me to GoFundMe, they contact me asking for information that they have already received. And given the fact that GoFundMe keeps so much of the money, given the fact that GoFundMe keeps so much of the funds that are donated, of that 401 $402,000 that you see on the platform's website, we've only received about $250,000, maybe $275,000 of your donations. For the sake of convenience, GoFundMe has kept over $125,000 to $50,000 of that money, just for the sake of convenience, robbing us and then have the audacity to ask for proof when you've taken already so much money from us, when you've already been provided with that proof. So as far as I'm concerned, they can pretty much suspend the campaign, which will in turn force all of you to send your donations in by check or by money order. Brothers and sisters, I'm not a crook. I am not a thief. My ambitions and my interests are a lot greater than money. What I want to do for our people and what I want to do for our young people goes beyond money. I know many of the hustlers in the conscious community, and I know that many of the hustlers in the black community can't think beyond their next meal, can't think beyond their next shopping spree, can't think beyond their next rent or mortgage payment. But Dr. Umar Johnson is a visionary. I think indefinitely, and I think very far into the future in terms of how I can best make a contribution to impact our people. But it bothers me that the same thing that was done to the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, it bothers me that the same thing that was done to the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, greatest black leader and organizer of the 20th century, 100 years ago, 100 years ago, black men and women 
went to the government of the United States and begged them to destroy Marcus Garvey, begged them to incarcerate Marcus Garvey, begged them to deport Marcus Garvey. And so here we are 100 years later. And as a race of people, we still have not learned. A hundred years later, and the same thing that was done to the king of Pan-Africanism is now being done to the prince of Pan-Africanism. But I want all my supporters to know, and I want all my college student supporters to know, and I want all the elders and the teenagers and the little children who support me, the unnamed millions from Africa to Australia to the United Kingdom to the Caribbean to Central and South America to Canada to the South Pacific to China to Japan throughout the entire world. I want my supporters to know that I will not abandon my post. I will not abandon my mission. I will not abandon my agenda because as I have told so many of you for so long, I do the work that I do because I believe that I was born to do it. This isn't coming from a place of narcissism. This isn't coming from a place of arrogance. But I believe within my heart that it is no coincidence that I happen to be related to the greatest black leader of the 19th century and that I happen to be a disciple of the greatest black leader of the 20th century. I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe it was a coincidence that my mother brought me into this world on the same day that the Nat Turner War began. That she brought me into this world on the same day that the Haitian Revolution began. That she brought me into this world the same day that the George Jackson prison revolution began. That she brought me into this world on the same day that the Frederick Douglass Fugitive Slave Convention began. I don't believe in no coincidences. So I'm going to stay in the fort. They can take the bachelors. They can take the second bachelors. They can take the first masters. They can take the second masters. They can take the third masters. They can take the doctorate degree. They can take the principal certificate. They can take the school psychology certificate. They can prevent me from getting my license as a psychologist. Whatever it is they want to do, they can go ahead and do it. But I will continue to fight for the rights of our children. And I will continue to fight for the rights of our people. And I want to thank all you brothers and sisters who have stood by my side through thick and thin. You were there in 2015 when a certain female tried to destroy my credibility by lying and saying that I took school money and spent it inappropriately. That she saw me spend money from the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. If that's true, may I die right now. If she saw me spending money from your pocket that you gave me to build a school for our children, may I die right now. And what bothered me then was that so many brothers in the conscious community, some of whom I considered to be associates, some of whom I've helped get paid, they seized upon the opportunity that she presented to try to destroy Dr. Umar Johnson through their platform on their media outlets. Everywhere I turned, there was a conversation about me without me. Everywhere I turned, a conversation about me without me. Up until 2015, I didn't have these problems. But the minute I started raising money to give our children a school that they deserve, all of a sudden, my problems began. In that very same year, that coon from Philadelphia began writing articles about me, jealous because he wished he could have been me. He wanted to be where I am and where I was then. And because his career didn't take off the way that my did, the way that my career did, he resorted to character assassinating. He resorted to passing around lies that I didn't have a doctorate, which all of you have since learned to be true. He resorted to coming up with fanciful schemes and ideas about me stealing school money. He started to fire that so many other thirsty, self-hating Negroes would then join in upon. But it's not about him today. Even as I sit here talking to you right now, another brother in the conscious community, a brother who claims he wants to work with me, a brother who tells people every chance he gets an opportunity that he wants to bury the hatchet with Dr. Umar Johnson. Well, he just did an hour and a half video taking every shot he possibly could, bringing up every misstep, every mishap and every misattribution made about me over the past year or two. As thirsty as he could possibly be, he could not wait to do a video on me. Why in the hell does a black man need to spend 90 minutes on film talking about another black man? Reminds me of another buffoon up in New York who did a 90 minute movie back in 2015 when that situation happened. But brothers and sisters, it ain't about them, it's about us. It's about our future. Let's talk about the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. 
In Chicago, there's three schools. One of them I'm confirmed to visit on Monday. Yes, I don't celebrate Christmas, but I respect all of you who do. And I pray to Almighty God, Olo Dumare, that you are not worshiping a white Jesus on Christmas Day, but that you are worshiping the black revolutionary Messiah born in the caves of Ethiopia. That is my prayer for you all. But I have no problem with your Christianity. Whether Jesus existed or not is irrelevant. The story of Jesus, the example of Jesus, an unapologetically African black man who spoke truth to power, I don't have a problem with that. I simply ask that the Jesus you serve looks like you and not like your oppressor. But on Christmas Day, while you're spending time with your family, as you should, I'll be visiting schools in Chicago. The realtor was gracious enough to let me into this one school that we can afford. And although I'm looking at Detroit and Atlanta very strongly, if things don't check out there, there's a school in Chicago that I can afford right now. But I have to make sure everything else checks out in that school before we grab it. In Detroit, there is a school that we just found out about, that we just found out about. It's in pretty good condition, pretty good condition. They want a couple hundred thousand. We have that. I'm waiting for the realtor to get access to the keys so we can get inside and take a look at it. I begged the realtor, get those keys, brother. I get to Detroit on December 31st, get those keys so we can get inside that building on December 31st and do the walkthrough. Just like I'm going to get inside that building in Chicago. Christmas Day, and do that walkthrough. Atlanta, Georgia, we have one school identified, but it's going to take a little work to get it up. But I've since found two other schools in, in Atlanta that we can afford as well. So we work in Detroit, we work in Chicago, we work in Atlanta, we work in. And if the school does not happen to be in one of, in your particular city where you are, just know that a school is coming soon. I am not interested in building one. I will go to Detroit and build one next year. Chicago, build one next year back home in Philly, maybe. Maybe down to Phoenix, maybe over to Oakland, maybe in Little Rock, maybe in Raleigh, maybe in Baltimore, maybe in D.C., maybe in Milwaukee, wherever it's necessary. But we must do the work, brothers and sisters. Now, because of this attempt to destroy me, to have the state of Pennsylvania Board of Psychology strip me of my credentials, Many of you have asked me, Dr. Umar Johnson, what can we do? Do you want us to show up? Do you want us to write letters? Brothers and sisters, I'm not giving you no directions. Do what your heart moves you to do. If your heart moves you to show up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania on Monday, January the 8th, do you show up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania Monday, January the 8th? If your heart moves you to write a letter to the chair of the State Board of Psychology, write it. If your heart moves you to write a letter to the hearing officer who will be overseeing my case at nine o'clock on January the 11th, January the 8th, then you write that letter. Whatever your heart moves you to do on behalf of Dr. Umar Johnson, then you do it. But I will not give no orders because this is a time I need you. I've always been there when y'all called on me. I've always been there. At great cost to myself and my family. I've always been there for you guys. Okay, so you do what it is you need to do. If Dr. King is in jail, and I'm nowhere near Dr. King, and please don't mistake my words for even suggesting that I can compare to the king. The prince cannot compare to the king. But if Dr. King is in jail, he shouldn't have to tell you to get him out. If Malcolm X is in trouble, he should not have to make a phone call and ask you to help him. If Mark is Garvey, is being marked for deportation back to Jamaica. He should not have to call on his people to save him. His people should love him enough to save him on their own. So do whatever it is in your heart to do. I've been saving black children for 20 years. I've saved thousands, probably tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands. Psychoacademic Holocaust book has saved lives. I have saved lives. My lecture has saved lives. I would stop doing this work the minute I felt I could no longer save a life, black man and black woman. So do whatever it is on your heart to do, brothers and sisters. But I want you to know right now, as I've called on my ancestors, I have renewed my faith. I have renewed my confidence in myself. I'm going forward. I can't stop. I'm too close. So many of you have told me. So many of my, <clears throat> excuse me, elders, members of my spiritual team have told me that the closer you get to the goal, 
the more hate you're going to get. The closer you get to the goal, the more they're going to try to shut you down. The closer you get to the goal, the more traps that will be laid out before you. It's a shame that my own people did this to me. There's one sister on YouTube. I'm not going to call her name because I know she's thirsty for attention. She has a whole YouTube page dedicated to teaching people how to destroy Dr. Umar Johnson. And the irony of all these people who claim that they need to hold me accountable, they haven't hold, held the killer of Michael Brown accountable. They haven't held the killer of Trayvon Martin accountable. They haven't held, held, held the killers of Tamir Rice or Sandra Bland accountable. They haven't held the ki killers of Philando Castile or Alton Sterling accountable. You haven't held, held any of them accountable. You haven't held the Ku Klux Klan accountable for all the black people they've murdered. You haven't held the black churches accountable for all the money they stole. You haven't held national black leaders accountable for all the money they've collected and never accounted for. You never held the Urban League or the NAACP, and I'm not knocking any of them. But how is it you can skate around everybody else and the only person you can hold accountable for in the black community is Dr. Umar Johnson? That's hypocrisy. That is absolute hypocrisy to spend time trying to destroy your man instead of doing work on your own. How do you try to destroy your man who's trying to build a school? If you don't like him, keep it moving. But every day I got to deal with homosexuals trolling my page. Every day I got to deal with lesbians and transvestites trolling my page. I got to deal with black men who love white women more than black women trolling my page. I got to deal with coons and crackers and all types of other types of reactionary individuals trolling my page. Do I troll your page? I don't post comments. I've never posted a Facebook comment, hardly ever, unless it's happy birthday. I don't post comments. I don't make videos about me, about other people. I may have made two, three videos, and that's only because I was attacked by those persons. I mind my business. I have too much work to do to be worrying about what other people do. Brothers and sisters, you all know I started the organization Team Pan-African, the International Movement for the Independence and Protection of African People. Well, I want you to know that in New Year's, in the new year, we will be coming back strong. In the new year, I will be bringing about a rebirth of Team Pan-African and all of you who are serious about the work. All of you who are serious about the work. True Pan-Africanists. True Garveyites. You will have an opportunity to help Dr. Umar Johnson organize our people internationally. I promised my brothers and sisters in Africa that I would do an international Pan-African youth conference there. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Whether it's Ghana, whether it's Namibia, whether it's Senegal, whether it's Kenya, whether it's the Republic of South Africa, Zimbabwe, where I was just invited to speak the other day, it will happen. And I'm asking brothers and sisters from America who want to help me make this happen. My brothers and sisters in the United Kingdom, I have a lot of supporters up in the UK. I have not forgotten you. Although I'm going to take a break from speaking in the new year, for my brothers and sisters in the United Kingdom, I owe you a visit. You haven't seen me in four years. My London family, you haven't seen me in four years. You will see me. I owe London that. Because London and the entire UK, Wolverhampton, Brist Bristol, all of those places have been very big Staunch Dr. Umar supporters, you will see me in the new year. I owe you that. But I just wanted to come on here briefly. And there's a lot more that I need to talk about, but I need to save it. Everything is not for the camera. There's a lot more I need to talk about, but I need to say it because save it because everything is not for the camera. There's a lot more I need to talk about, but I can't say it right now because everything is not for the camera. But I will talk about it in Chicago on Tuesday. I'm going to talk about it in Atlanta on Thursday. I'm going to talk about it in Houston on Saturday. I'm going to talk about it in Detroit next Monday. Continue to donate. But because the GoFundMe campaign may soon be a thing of the past, mail in your donation. Check a money order. Payable to FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 6872, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19132. P.O. Box 6872, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19132. Now, I told you guys. 
that tonight I was going to cover the principles of unity of Deedon Kamathi in the Kenyan land and freedom army known as the Mau Mau. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that for another time, brothers and sisters. I just wanted to come on here to let y'all know your brother going strong, going strong. I'm going hard. I'm not quitting. Maybe it's in the design of the Lord for me to lose that school psychology cert so I can focus on bigger things. I do not know. Maybe it is in the design of the Lord to have this happen to me so I can wake up to the reality that every brother ain't a brother and every sister ain't a sister. Maybe it was a part of the divine design for me to do this, for this to happen, so I can recognize that every brother ain't a brother and every sister is not a sister. I don't know. But because I need a break, brothers and sisters, because I need a break, after I'm done the Kwanzaa tour, and once the hearing is over, and whether I'll be uncertified school psychologist or certified school psychologist after January 8th, no one knows but the Lord. And Ifa. Whatever it be, we're going to go forward, but I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go underground for a little bit. So when you see me take down my Facebook, I'm okay. I'm going underground for a minute. When you see me suspend my Instagram account, I'm okay. I'm going underground for a minute. When you see me suspend my Twitter, I'm okay. I'm going underground for a minute. If I don't respond to your text message or your email, don't take it personal. I'm going underground for a minute to get my mind right. Get my strength back. Get my old goon energy where it needs to be. And then I'm coming back above board. And when I come back, when I rise on that third day, you better be ready because Ifa Tunde coming back 50 times stronger, 50 times wiser, 50 times more focused. And when I come back, I'm hoping I'm coming back with the announcement of FDMG. In fact, I don't want to come back until I come back with FDMG. That's what it's about. Do your Kwanzaa tour. Take care of Japan and China. Handle this hearing. Disappear from the landscape. Get that school. And when you get the school, come back a million times stronger. Dr. Umar Johnson, your ancestors are counting on you. But let me also say this. Because of the pressure that has been put upon me, because of the pressure, go fund me, State of Pennsylvania, Board of Psychology, IRS, Haters at large from the conscious community. I'm going to have to move quicker to purchase a school. I'm going to have to move quicker. And that's why I'm really hoping we can get them keys to that school in Detroit. I will see the other school in Chicago on Monday. I'm still trying to get into those couple of schools in Atlanta. We need to hurry up and purchase a school before something else happens with this campaign and i don't need to tell you what that something else can be i'm not speaking of any type of physical harm i'm speaking of harm to the account because of what these haters have done we have to speed up the timeline even more write that check and get that property before these haters do any more damage to our agenda to build a school than what they've already done. So with that being said, if any my, my Facebook has been suspended. I will not be on Facebook for 30 days. My Facebook was suspended earlier today for posting the letter about me being ordered to stand trial before the state of Pennsylvania Board of Psychology so you won't see me on Facebook for 30 days. All announcements will be Twitter and Instagram. All announcements until January the 22nd will be Twitter and Instagram. Facebook suspended me. They've never suspended me for 30 days. Facebook has never suspended me for 30 days. 
I believe that Facebook and GoFundMe and the FBI and the Black Identity Extremist Task Force, as well as general haters in the community, I believe, are all working together. Remember what I always said. White supremacy is powerless unless there is participation from our own community. White supremacy is powerless to destroy us unless there is participation from our community. If you need to reach me, you can email me through the website, drumarjohnson.com. You can email me directly, drumarjohnson at yahoo.com. You can add me on WhatsApp and you can text me, 215-989-9858. You can text me through my regular phone, 215-989-9858. Please continue to send in your donations. Mail them in. Don't use GoFundMe anymore. Mail them in. Unless me and GoFundMe work something out, I think I'm going to let that be a thing of the past. Mail in the donations. Send your resumes. We are in the final stretch of this race. We are coming up on the final lap. And we will not be deterred from our goal. Our parents deserve this. Our boys deserve this. Our girls ultimately will deserve this. We will be victorious. I want all my supporters to develop a victorious consciousness. No more negativity. We done with it. We're going into the new year with positivity. No more negativity. We're done with it. We're going into the new year with positivity. Brothers and sisters. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. I want to thank you all for joining in, for supporting me, for showing me love. This will be my last set of tours for a while. Self-sponsored tours, my last set for a while. Chicago, I will see you Sunday. Atlanta, well, I will see you Sunday, but then I will see you Tuesday at the lecture in Chicago. Atlanta, I will see you Thursday. Houston, I will see you Saturday. Detroit, I will see you next Monday. As Garvey said, without confidence in yourself, you are twice defeated in the race of life. With confidence, you have won even before you have started. As Frederick Douglass said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess the favor, agitation. Progress without agitation. But like those who want crops without plowing up the ground, they want water, but they don't want to deal with the waves in the ocean. They want crops, but they don't want to deal with the rain. The struggle might be moral or might be physical or might be both moral and physical. But Frederick Douglass said it must be a struggle because power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, black people. And it never will. As Garvey said. If I must suffer and be persecuted and die in order to liberate my people, I will gladly accept the cost because the future of my people are worth it. If Nat Turner could put up with it, if Garvey, if King, if Megger, if Fred Hampton could put up with it, if Michael Brown and Trayvon and Emmett Till and Tamir Rice could put up with it, so can I, Black Power. Thank you.